Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a, a look at how we build a, a fairway club that has these glue-in shafts. And we're going to change it uh, from this, this Ventus TR. This is a, a TaylorMade Stealth 2 7 wood from this Ventus TR. And then we're going to give it the real deal um, Ventus VeloCore shaft. Okay, now we, we built this... Um, we built this three wood for the customer a few uh, weeks ago. He absolutely loves it. So today we're just going to convert uh, the seven wood and try and make it the same. So the first thing we always do is we've got to assess his three wood. So I would I would measure it for length and record. This one's been um, end of grips cut at 43 inches. Uh, there's been no no tip trim for a three wood. So Basically, but what we mean by tip trim is how much, this is a raw shaft here, 46 inches long, brand new shaft. How much has been cut off at this end, at the tip end? And so, just by looking here, there's only about an inch there that would go into the head. So this has got no tip trim. Now, I, I built this one myself, so I know it's got no tip trim. And Fujikura recommends no tip trim uh, for a three wood either. So. Once I've measured the length, which I know it's been cut at 43 inches, I'll measure the swing weight with this Gripmaster grip, and it's D3.3. And so we want something fairly similar, if anything, maybe, maybe a smidgey heavier for the seven wood. So the seven wood, you know, they start out at you know, 4175. But again, we'll check. We'll always check where we've got to be. So stealth two fairway. It's not a plus, that's my mistake. So view product specs. Seven wood here says 4175. Just there. 4175 is the is the length. So that means it'll be cut at 41.5. And then the, the end of the grip will make it 41.75. So next thing we do is have a look at, see if there's any tip trimming instructions. And the best way to do that is to go to the manufacturer's website. So in this case, we've got a VeloCore uh, Fujikura shaft, Ventus Red. So we'll have a look, we'll go to their website. And on the Fujikura website, you'll see there's all these tabs. We go into education and then we go to tip trimming info just here click on the tip trimming info and that'll tell us see all wood shafts woods here no tip trim no tip trim for three wood but five woods half and seven wood is one inch so then on my specs i will record a one inch tip trim for the three wood we're about to install so now we're going to start pulling apart so we know what length we've got to make it we know how much um, to cut off at the tip and we know what swing weight to make it. So it's a pretty good start. I'm gonna heat up the... Um Gotta get that on the right setting there. What I like to do, I don't, I don't like to try and save ferrules or anything like that. So I'm gonna first I'm going to first melt off this small piece here, which is the ferrule, in between the hosel and the shaft. We don't want too much heat ever on the shaft because that's made up of, of graphite and glue and it can easily burn. So um, I'm just going to run this around the ferrule until it'll start, it'll start to sort of bubble. You know, you can see it starts to melt. It's going to start to melt a bit after not too long. It's just got a little smoky in the bandit there. And then that will just kind of peel off, really. Once I've, it doesn't have to be too clean. Once I've peeled off most of that ferrule, I can now put it in the puller. Clamp down on that, on that shaft puller. And then just heat the head. Now, TaylorMade uses pretty nice glue, so this shouldn't take you know, too long to heat out. Maybe 
20 seconds or so. I've already applied a little bit of heat to the ferrule. And I'd gradually sort of, you now it's kind of giving way there, you know. So I can get that off. And then I'll just go the rest by hand. Now, all these pullers do is ensure that the, the head comes off, you know, it comes straight out. I'm just going to, I mean, I wouldn't recommend picking this out with your hands, but anyway. I'm a big boy. So that's now been taken off. I usually leave it on a little foam pad there. And the shaft is going to be, uh, customer wants this saved. I and mean, that might be a little bit hot, but it's okay. I'm just gonna basically wipe that down. Custom wants this saved just in case he ever wants to go back to a, like to, to maybe sell the shaft. He might save the Velocore shaft for another, for another club. So that's saved. This tip now is nice and strong because the head's been pulled off you know, in a straight line, basically. Once you twist, big problems. So that shaft's fine now for, for multiple uses or, or for reuse, okay? So now we've got to clean the, clean the head, usually about an eight mil drill bit. This is a three, three five parallel. We just give that a little drill out, get the glue out of it. Um, my other drill here has got the hosel cleaner. It's just a little wire cleaning brush. Give that a little clean. And so that's nice and clean now. I'll just turn my back, sorry about my back. Just give it a little blow out. And then I'll usually just try and tidy up those, just even the internals. And now that head's, you know, bore's nice and clean. It's ready to have a shaft inserted. Okay, so next I've got a, we're talking about that tip trimming on the, on the website. So I'll just put this over onto my ruler here and just mark it at one inch. So that's one inch from all that and all that's gonna get removed in a second. I'm gonna cut it off. And that's what we call by, you know, tip trim. That's a tip trim. All it does is make the shaft a little firmer, a little stiffer. And so, you know, sometimes tour pros will have that, um, I should find my glasses up on the wall here. Sometimes you usually just stuck on my head all day. Um, you know, pros will, will cut off the tip to make a shaft play a little bit stiffer. Now in a seven wood, we want that shaft to play a little firmer to play the same, the same flex. So for example, your three iron shaft is a bit softer than say your four and then your five. They, sorry, they get a little stiffer. That's my mistake. The three ones is the softest one. Then they get gradually stiffer as the club gets shorter. So the same thing happens with the woods. They get gradually stiffer as the woods get shorter. So this is seven wood, one inch tip. So I'm gonna just bring it in here and cut it. So that's cut that little bit of tip trim off, that little tip off. And now I'm just gonna prep the shaft in here. Um, suck up the air with the Dyson. All right, so when we tip trim the shaft, we just take the paint off. We don't want to take too much off because then that, this section gets too narrow on it and it, it'll jeopardize the integrity of the tip, it might break. So I see that a fair bit where people have been a little bit overzealous or a little bit excited about you know, making sure the paint's off. So the next step for me is to put that shaft all the way in as deep as it can go, leave my finger there and that tells me the bore depth. Now I'm gonna sort through my little knockers and I'm gonna find one that leaves a tiny bit of the shaft exposed there. And I'll explain why I do that in a minute. So I get my little T, oh, my little T. This is a little ferrule I'm gonna use, not very big. It's quite a small ferrule. The TaylorMade's got pretty small ferrules. And I'm gonna get that onto the shaft and then use my knocker. So I've got, I've got shaft, little knocker here. And the knocker will basically just knock the ferrule down. So it just goes down to a certain depth. 
Now, because of this knocker, I know that when I put that in, there's actually gonna be a tiny, tiny little bit, you know, maybe only two millimeters, there'll be a tiny little bit of room in the bottom here. And what do we do that for? We do it to allow for a swing weight, if I need it. If I need to add weight in this end, I can't just jam the shaft all the way in and then go to put a swing weight in and all of a sudden the shaft, you know, it'll sit out like such because the weight's got a little bit of a head on it, if that makes sense. So we never ever insert shafts in any build, in this workshop anyway, I never insert a shaft all the way to the bottom. That's amateur hour right there, right? So every manufacturer will have a ferrule depth. We call that the ferrule depth. They'll all be different. Everyone manufactures different. I mean, every bore, this is the bore, the section that goes down there, down through the club, we call that the bore. So every bore is different. Every recommended ferrule depth is different. And quite often when you take the shaft, you know, the, the, the club out, you can get an idea of how deep it was based on the ferrule length and then your knocker length, right? So there are little things you can figure out. Now, this is nothing new, but that's certainly what we do here. So now I've got the, the, the tip section ready to go. I need to now get the butt section ready to go. So now I've recorded that I needed to cut this, cut the shaft at 41.5. So I get it in here, make sure it's straight. 41.5 on the ruler is cut there. I'm gonna take it away. I'm gonna pull it apart. I'm gonna make sure my rulers, I'm a bit OCD about these things, but I, I just wanna make sure it's right. You know, measure twice, cut once. It's right on 41.5. And I'm gonna go and cut it to length. I clamp it in there on, on the cut line. You may or may not have noticed I like to turn the shaft, there'll, there'll be a little bit of graphite, you see this come out here? A little bit of graphite come out the end. A bit more, there we go. But I like to turn the shaft while I'm cutting it because I want to avoid any splintering. I don't, I don't want to get this, I don't want to get a big splinter through the end of each of the shafts. So I always turn it when I'm cutting it. It'll give me a nice clean cut on the end. So now, the next step will be to swing weight. All right, so the choice of, um, grip here. Now some people might ask, why is he playing 6S? This is customer request. He didn't want to go heavier. So we're going to go 6S the same as his 3-wood. We're going to try and match up these builds as best as we can. So I'm putting it on the swing weight scale. The customer has chosen the signature black standard Cabretta grip. Now this is a beautiful grip. It's actually quite thin. It's quite light. Gripmaster leather. Um, Nice red stitching at the back, like almost like an aligned grip, but it's sticky. I don't know if you can put it up here in the microphone. You probably hear that stickiness, beautiful and sticky. Super soft cabretta, so that's like a, a sheep, sheepskin, like your, your gloves. So beautiful grip, love this one. Um, so what we do is we get it on there dry, okay? So if you have a look at that, it's D3.3 dry. So that the glue is gonna, look how dirty the machine is, wow. What a grub. Anyway, that needs some attention. So we're at D3.3 dry. The glue is gonna add a little bit more. So um, although the, the, the plastic on the head will take off some. So this is gonna be, I mean, I could take that plastic off now and see what sort of effect that little bit of plastic has on it. Put him back on. Let's see what it says. How much, that plastic's very, very light, but it's still 0.2. Okay, so we're down to 3.1. This is gonna be about a 3.6 build by the end of it without any tip weights. Now, as it turned out, I didn't need tip weights. What do we need? What do we mean by tip weights? Who mean these little fellas? Go in the drawer here and you could get a little lead weight and pop it down there. That's four grams. Now if I, put, if I used that, for example, I wanted a heavier swing weight and I put that in there, we go from a 3.1 dry, wait, he's gotta stay on there, up to a 5.5 dry, right? So you see how that can change the swing weight 
and but without it's not going to change the look at all because it's hidden it's hidden inside there oh there he is just hidden so we have uh, anywhere from from one to ten grams in in those weights uh, obviously you know ten grams quite long we don't like love to use those to be honest but at the end of the day the shaft is flexing up here it doesn't really flex right down at the tip so now we're ready for glue I'm going to keep that grip aside so we don't need any tip weights but I still am going to be consistent in my bore depth and that's why I still use that knocker I've got a part A and a part B glue here equal parts good mix And then, you don't, I mean, you don't need heaps of glue. I suppose you're better off with, you know, too much than not enough, but I just put a little bit in. Give it a good swirl. It's not heaps in there. I might just dab a little bit more in. I mean, my mix is, is overboard. I don't need that much on the mix. A little bit on the shaft. Now this is, this is quite important, this part. So I'll put it in and I'll turn it in. So I'm turning that in to make sure the glue's really even. You can see a little bit of glue is popping out at the end. And then what I'll do is I'll dab that in glass. And that's got a little bit of glass on the ends. And all that does is when I turn it in, I'm gonna try and see if you can hear this. You can hear that glass grinding away. All that's doing is centering the shaft, making sure that the, 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 the shaft, making sure that the shaft is right in the middle of the bore. Now I'll normally make sure it's nice and lined up. That ventus is lined up at the back here beautifully. Little tap. And then what I'll do is I'll get some alcohol, try not to sniff too much of it but I'll get a little alcohol and just clean around. Just clean around the end there. And so that's nice and clean. It's very, I'm gonna stand it up because I want the glue to fall down towards the head end. But that's really centered. So the amount of extra ferrule here is the same as the extra ferrule here and the back and the front. So the ferrule's a little bit wider than that bore throughout, you know, throughout the whole thing. Now. If you don't have the tools to, to turn that ferrule down, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, we try and get a ferrule that's almost identical in width from the bore here to the, to the ferrule there. And now that's easy enough to measure. So I'll show you that in a sec. Okay, so fast forward maybe 10 minutes and the glue's gone off. I like this glue because it stays kind of, um, pliable it'll it'll stretch a little bit it'll give a little bit it's not kind of brittle like a biscuit it won't just snap so next thing we've got to do we've got to try and turn this ferrule now I was talking about the ferrules before have a look at the bore width is this is <laughs> let me let me go this way so you can see this better but the bore width is about 466, 0.466. And this ferrule that I've put on it is about 0.488. So it's slightly bigger, right? And so you'll get a tiny little lip in between, you know, the bore and the ferrule. And I like to use a, a ferrule that's slightly over, over, over width. So then I can do what we say is turn it down. Now, you can turn these down, you could get some fine sandpaper. And I'll, I like to protect the shaft here, just put a bit of tape on it. You could turn that down with sandpaper if you had the patience to rub it all down. But I'm gonna put it in the, in the little machine over here, get my glasses again. We'll come back to this multi-use machine here. And basically this belt here is like a hard cloth and it's going to turn that ferrule down. So. I'll turn that on, goes through there, and then I protect the shaft here because I don't want that belt touching the shaft. It's just gonna take the paint off, and it's pretty much, it's not ruined, but it looks horrible. 
And as I turn that down, it's you can probably just see that little bit of ferrule fell off. Turn it off. I like to turn it off with a grip. It sometimes gives me a little shock with my rubber shoes and all that energy. But these little parts here, are little bits of ferrule, that just kind of get turned down and burnt off. So this is now really flush in its finish. It's perfectly flush. I'm going to take off the tape. Throw that in the bin. And it's, it's all good and well to have a flush finish. But we want it bright and shiny. So the key to bright and shiny is a bit of Aussie Diggers acetone. Tissue. I just fold it down, you know. Put some acetone on there. And then this is, I mean, this is not hard to do, but we just turn the head, just turn it, right? And now if we look at that finish, it's beautiful. Shiny, flush, beautiful finish. And all we've really got to do now is put the grip on. So with a grip master, these are leather grips, they're the best grips. They're so sticky, like I said, but there's a thing called an underlisting here. And so this rubber at each end, it's covered by the leather. So there's a really, really thin rubber internal section. It's so thin. So we can't have any burrs on the end of the shaft. This has got to be really, really clean. Now, after I've cut it, I don't want to sand it. A steel shaft, I could sand down. So the best idea for, for a um, graphite is just a little bit of tape. Run the tape over the end. And then just push it in. I mean, now I've got, you know, the tape protecting that. Okay, so grip is gonna go on next. I would normally, I mean, I normally, you know, just mark roughly here and roughly, you know, the end of the grip and put a little black texture mark on there. So we know, you know, it's got a black texture mark. So we know how much um, double-sided tape. Now, there's multiple ways to put on a grip. I like to just use double-sided tape with a gripping solution, which is non-toxic, non-flammable. Um, so I put the club in the little vise here. Make sure it's not overly tight. If you tighten up too much, you're gonna break a shaft. You're gonna clamp it, you're gonna squish it, no good. So I'll get out my bit of double-sided tape and then I'll start it on that little marking that I made with my texture. Start it there. And you'll notice, mate, mate, it's just past the end there, probably a centimeter. I got lucky with my pull then, but I, but I have done a, a few grips. So you get used to how far out to pull the tape. Make it nice and flat. Do it the same on the other side. So double-sided tape's covered. Now, with the end here, we actually don't want to exp like let any solution get down the shaft. So that's kind of crimped tight and it's sealed off the end. Because the last thing I want is gripping solution going down that way. It's not ideal. So we, with grip masters, be liberal with the solution. I'll usually fill it, as you can see there, put it on and fill it again. Might as well, you fill it three times if you want. More is better than less, right? Because these can be a little bit tight. We've got to push them on straight. Otherwise you'll nick the inside of that underlisting. Okay, so it's on all the way. I can tell it's on all the way. I'll check underneath first because this is a very ribbed grip. So but I'll take that off and, and show you in a sec. I'll take it out, make sure there's no solution coming out the end. I mean, if you're paranoid about how much you've, you've put it on, well, that looks great there. But on the back here, I want to make sure the back, that, that ribbed section is really, really straight. I want to make sure that's nice and straight. If you're worried about how far you've pushed it on, you can always just re-measure the club. You know, put it straight on here. You know, and it's just, it's been cut there, so it's, it's picked up a quarter inch. Not quite, but it's picked up nearly a quarter, and that's what we expect. Some people would, you know, tap, tap, tap. 
I mean, you've done enough groups, you know it's on, right? But you shouldn't feel any, any looseness up here, but that's on perfectly. I'll sit it down. Just make sure again that that ribbing is really straight. With, with animal products, not quite as, uh, I suppose, consistent as rubber, you know, with leathers and whatnot. So sometimes your shapes can be a little bit out or, you know, weights can be a little bit out. I always recycle my solution. So, so this little drip tray, it's pretty old, but it's got a little hole in the end. And then I'll put him up on the, the vise there and just run it back into the, the sauce bottle that I use. All right, so it's all dried and done. The final little bit of, um, you know, the build is to um, use isopropyl alcohol, which is what you'd clean computer screens and whatnot with. I just rub that down the shaft. Make sure it's beautiful, shiny, you know, and it's ready to go for the customer in tip top shape. Looks spectacular. What a great looking stealth two seven wood. Final checks, I'll always, you know, final check on, on swing weight. Um, just so we've got a record, 3.9. So the three wood was 3.3, this is D3.9. That's a nice progression, it's slightly heavier than the three wood. Uh, perfect length, perfect finish. We'll be a happy customer. There you have it. Stealth 7 would build.